What's up guys, Triple C here. In today's video I wanted to have a small discussion about the um, Rockstar DLCs in general and also particularly this DLC, the Cunning Stunts DLC. Because one point which always gets brought up with every DLC is people saying, well, it was a free DLC, what do you expect? Um, you didn't have to pay any money for it, you got it all for free, you bought the game, and since three years they're giving us free DLCs. Um, let me say one thing. DLCs are not for free. Rockstar is a company, a, a, a corporation, and like all corporations, they want to, they have to make money. Any corporation makes money, and um, and that's just something totally normal. That's also something a lot of people often say. Um, well, Rockstar is all about the money. They just care about the money. Of course they do. Like, you would too. Any corporation does that. You also want to earn money, right? I mean, it's totally natural, and I would never condemn them for it because that's just the way economics work and, and capitalism works, basically. So with the, all the DLCs, um, basically, if they wouldn't be earning money from them, they wouldn't be giving us free DLCs. Um, for, for us, for example, a lot of the people also watching my channel were longtime fans of this game. We love this game. We're on this game since the beginning of PS3, Xbox 360. We've been grinding our heists, you know. We, we've done all the DLCs and, like, earned all the money for each DLC to get the cars. And we are not the people buying shark cards. And that's one thing you have to remember, like the community we're in, with, um, whether it be stunt racing, death matches, or, or, or combat jobs, whatever, if you're a free mode player, if you're a long time player on this game, the people you, you're probably hanging out with are also long time players or people that have been on the game very long. And we live in a bubble uh, sometimes. You have to be aware of that. There are a lot of just casual gamers or people that are just getting introduced to the game. And these people don't have these funds we have in game to just um, get those vehicles and there are a lot a lot of people buying shark cards um, you couldn't imagine how many there are actually and that's the main concept of all these DLCs basically and you see that trend also with all the vehicles I mean uh, like with each DLC, the vehicles have become more and more expensive. Like, uh, I remember when, when we got ill-gotten gains, how, like, outraged we were, how expensive the Osiris and the T20 were. I mean, they were just the most expensive cars, basically. And now if you look at this DLC, how ridiculously um, uh, expensive these cars are. Like, people like us who've been grinding heists forever and been playing this game forever, we, we can afford that. You know, and uh, we, we have our friends to ask them or we know which content to check out on YouTube to basically get an idea of which vehicles are worth it. But people that are just getting introduced to the game, and especially also kids that don't earn their own money yet, um, you don't have, like, th that relationship to money is totally different. Like, th the first day you start earning your own money and you work for your money, that's the day when you really learn to appreciate that money also. And that's why a lot of also probably the older players wouldn't spend it on shark cards. And I mean, a lot of games are, are basically focused around that model of um, microtransactions. Like uh, also a lot of these um, mobile phone uh, browser games or whatever, you get them for free, but then there's all these microtransactions. And that's, how, and that's how they actually earn their money. And actually hoping to, through all these microtransactions to attain more money than just selling the game once to, to a player, which often really works because it just adds up over time. You get hooked to these games, you get addicted to them, and you just purchase more and more microtransactions. And in the end, if you tally it up over a time span of two or three years, you actually spend much more money than if you would have just bought the game one time. And I mean, with Rockstar, it's not only really microtransactions. If you look at these shark cards, I mean, I never bought one, obviously, but um, what is it, like $100 for, for the most expensive shark card? And that gives you, I think, $8 million in in-game GTA dollars. So any any new player or casual gamer just getting on the game now watching some youtube videos seeing all these kind of stunts races like yeah i also want to do that like they're gonna buy the game and if they want to buy the three new supercars the tyrus the re7b and the uh, etr 
they got to buy one of these mega megalon <laughs> megadon i don't know shark cards for 80 bucks 100 dollars which cost them more than the game itself just to get the three new super cards you know and like a lot of kids just ask their parents and they get the money for that you know and some people they just want to have these cars then and they pay that money so it's probably even more it, it definitely it, it i'm pr i'm almost 100 percent certain that it's more profitable for rockstar to just um give us free dlcs and just have these are all these shark card sales because um, with the free DLCs and all the advertising that is done by the YouTubers for them, there's so much hype being created that it draws so many people into the game that wouldn't be there if it would be a paid DLC. If it would be a paid DLC, only like hardcore fans would obviously pay for it, but that's a one-time payment. And with, and with that strategy they're, they're following here, which is on, on their part very smart also, definitely, you know, like overpriced vehicles, just add them to the game, people want to have them, and they just keep spending money and money and i mean gta 5 i think is the best selling game in, in history and like this company like they made revenues of billions of dollars billions i mean wrap your mind around that number it's nine zeros you know like we're talking big big money here and trust me like um if you know a bit about economics basically um, they're not paying for these DLCs, like all the money it costs to develop it and program it. They're not paying it from, from those initial sales they made. They, any, any company, any corporation will cover their expenses uh, like from um, from current um, income so that's basically what, what they're doing and like a corporation just follows simple goals it's pure economics that's just what it is like a company has to grow period they have to grow they have to maximize profit and they have to aim for cost efficiency so um, basically that's what you're seeing in each dlc and um while it might be might be easy to just say yeah it was free the DLC trust me they're making more money off of the DLC than if they would have charged for it and only a few people would have bought it if they wouldn't be making money off these DLCs they wouldn't bring them out it's as simple as that you know like Rockstar is definitely not a charity as is no corporation I'm as I said I'm not condemning them for it it just is what it is like uh, we live in a in a capitalistic uh, society, and, and that's just the way economics work. So um, I, I can't blame him for that. But at the same time, um, like that one point I just said, cost efficiency, that's basically an important point because what a company will do is they want to maximize their profits without spending um, a lot of money on it. So that's what you often see in these DLCs, just especially in this one, what, what they did to the creator again, like it was severely crippled again, you know, like a lot of people are so disencouraged with the game right now. I'm not kidding. Some of the best creators stopped playing this game. Um, I don't know if you were into GTA with ill-gotten gains when they broke the creator, but we had that Creators Unite campaign. Uh, where everybody was rocking that hashtag fix the creator everybody was wearing those masks and everything but the person behind that campaign basically who orchestrated it and came up with it was strong tank one of our commissioners in the gccc crew and strong tank now who organized that campaign last year he's not playing the game right now because they broke everything like we got all these new props guess what happened deathmatch creator lts creator capture creator broken and they didn't even get those props you know like um if, if i don't know like the people that are saying the creator is fine like it is i really can't understand that like either you've just been um placing some tubes with the snapping option which works great which is a great addition but the main point is why break all the other stuff why break all the fundamental stuff i mean don't they test it i really don't get it because um, we're not against what they gave us and we don't want any special treatment. We don't say we want even more or that wasn't enough and they should have given us that or that. We're just asking, don't break stuff constantly. You know, like why, when anything gets added, why do two more uh, things get broken? Like if you've only been placing tubes and or you're just starting out to create, 
if you're gonna place a regular prop, it will drop now. So you never know where you're gonna place it. A template will always rise when you place it. So you never know where you're gonna place it. Uh, we figured out so many intricate methods to build like the most cr the crazy creations basically. And all that stuff doesn't work anymore. Like only very basic stuff can be built now. And we've already figured out some workarounds for some of the more intricate stuff, but it's just such a hassle. I'm not kidding you guys. Like, for example, my Mega Turtle Boost race I built, like with the Cunning Stunts update, um, it took me 10 times longer than it would have if just the basic features that were working before, if they would have still worked, I would have been done 10 times quicker. One other thing, the creator always crashes, and um, which is just, of course, if you're building a race, you can save often, but, I, and I'm not kidding you here, like I have two races that were published already wh where I wanted to make some changes on them. And I definitely spent like over 20 hours in them. Always when you test it, the creator crashes, you know, so it's just like 20 hours down the drain. The thing constantly crashes. It's just so aggravating, so disencouraging, so demotivating. Why always break stuff, you know, like um, and with the cunning stunts update, like obviously what I also touched on there with the shark cards and sales and basically getting um, I'm making more revenue and making more profit. This Cunning Stunts update, it definitely appeals to a very broad audience. You know, it's big and sexy and, 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 and it looks massive and, you know, and that's basically something that I totally get and what is totally okay. And, and yeah, the more the better, like get them all in here, you know, get them all to join our custom tracks. I, I love it, you know, but these new physics which they introduced are also kind of game breaking to a lot of us because for one they they carry over to old races which just completely destroys them and okay you can argue with the cards being magnetically attracted if that's a good thing or not um, it probably is a good thing for a lot of the stunts but um, then you got the camera views which are just great on a big loop or if you go uphill slope any other stunt the new camera view is absolutely horrible like on a wall right because the camera always pans in on the roof of the car um, you never see what's coming up on a wall right the more circular a wall right is you're not going to see where the flip comes or where the exit of the wall right is just like a turtle slide you won't see anything of the turtle slide because it just pans on the roof of the car and like all those stunts they look <laughs> absolutely crap with the new camera um, view and with the new physics and um, yeah, I don't know, it's just um, because like the main point is, you know, like if they would have added cunning stunts, if they would have given us all these props and everything, it would have been just as appealing without new physics. And nobody would have said, yeah, cool props, but they should have also given us new physics, you know, like nobody would have said that, you know, we would have all been happy, we would have gone buck wild with the props, we would have built crazy stuff, they should have added it to the deathmatch capture LTS creator, like why not give it to the players that enjoy those job types, there's so much potential there, and I think that's really a dick move, like they just have to make them available, it's basically, you know, it's, it's not a big deal and they're just not giving it to them and at the same time they broke the creator for those guys so yeah way to go way to go really and and i get that with the um with, with uh, appealing to a broad audience you know and that's totally okay but like the main point what i just said why couldn't they why did they have to change the physics for the pure racing thing it, cars were buffed I, I don't know a lot of people didn't realize it or when you talk about it, some people say it's placebo i've asked around with the gp racing scene and some of the best races on this game like this has been confirmed by the best races and i, I felt it on the first day that cars understeer that it's just weird driving in this cunning cunning stunts game mode now, the cars just understeer and they're slower. Cars have been buffed. So basically, you need the three new supercars. They're absolutely dominant. You can basically, if you're just a pure racer, you can actually sell all your supercars now after this update. They've completely unbalanced the class. And the main thought behind this, of course, is money, you know, because um, they, want pe they want people to 
buy shark cards to buy these overpriced new vehicles because if you're not going to have them in a pure race uh, you won't stand a chance you you basically can't win so um <laughs> yeah I, I don't know like they could like if they would have just kept some balance in the class and by the way for stunt racing the new cars are shit because they're two-wheel drive any uphill section and you got a lot of uphill stuff and stunts going up the tubes going up ramps going up wall rides going up spirals they're all slower on the uphill parts because they only have two-wheel drive but yeah, um, people are just going to watch a YouTube video. Oh, it's the fastest car. They're going to take it. They're going to want to have it. I see it all the time. People are in the wrong cars and stunt races. Uh, they're always in the RE7B and cars like that, which will just not do better on a real stunt race. But um, I mean, I don't get that. Like why after three years on the game change the physics? I get stuff like making cars connect to surfaces easier. It totally makes sense, you know, especially for all these big stunts. It totally makes sense. But why buff the cars? Why make the Osiris? Why make the Turismo? Why make the T20 slower? Like Anadraps, for example, who's one of the best racers on this game I know. He's a hot lapper. He's a GP racer from Nodo like these guys hot lap they put they put a gp race on 20 laps they sit in a single race for three four five hours trying to get that best lap time and these guys when they do their laps they know their times and he told me that on tracks where he has an average of one minute per lap with all the old supercars he actually now gets one second slower so that's how the cars have been buffed and i mean that's also just a dick move it wouldn't have been necessary all the new people coming on the game would have bought the new cars anyways because all the youtubers are saying oh cool we got the re7b everybody check it out and people are gonna buy it any fucking ways you know so yeah um basically that's just my quick thoughts on this um let me know your thoughts in the comments i don't know i'm out peace